You know, I write every morning. Usually I've got a number of ideas that are just kind of floating around in my mind. Things that I want, I want to think through and that I want to write on. So this past Monday morning was different. I had nothing. So I went to Google. I searched for the biggest issues facing Christians today in America and first world countries. Now, I had a new problem. Which of the top 10 would I write about? Well, I chose a diluted faith. What's that? Well, I think to dilute means to make it weaker or to thin it down. So with my faith, that's when I let worldviews collide with my faith, my beliefs, in such a way that the worldviews win. It's when I put more emphasis on what my culture says is okay than what God says is okay. It's choosing man's, man's view of truth over God's view of truth. It's putting myself first all the time. Here's an interesting quote from William Booth. He was the founder of the Salvation Army way back in the late 1800s. As the year 1900 approached, marking the beginning of a new century, a reporter asked Booth, what are the chief dangers that we're going to encounter in this new century? Booth responded, I consider that the chief dangers which confront the coming century will be religion without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, politics without God, and heaven without hell. Wow. I have no idea how the people of Booth's time took that prediction, but looking back from today, I think he nailed it. Author Daniel Sweet, he responded to that quote, says American Christianity is already there. In a society in which there are no absolutes and every individual is a free agent, we're taught to be self-reliant and independent. Christianity is no longer the automatic default faith of young adults. Deluded faith seems to be, to be a big part of our lives today. So what does that mean for you? What's it mean for me? Well, here's my take. It's like being in the small boat in the middle of the ocean. And then you discover that your boat has no rudder. If I have let myself become self-dependent instead of God-dependent, well, I am in trouble. I am helpless. Yet if I am God-dependent, everything changes. I'm not alone in the boat. For God is with me. I am not without hope. Because God always has answers. You know, God wasn't surprised when I got into this predicament in the first place. God has resources to rescue me from sending some of his angels to a passing freighter or whatever. Now, the end result of this situation may be the same. I may die on the boat, but I believe there is a huge difference in dying on my own and dying with God in my side. Your faith and mine don't have to be diluted. It's really our choice. Sure, we'll continue to be, to be bombarded with all these things from the world, all these worldviews that challenge our faith. But we can keep our eyes on God. Do you realize how often the views from the world change? Compare that with the ways of God that have never changed. I know it will continue to be a battle probably for the rest of my life, but, but I'm going to fight. I don't want a deluded faith. I want to keep my eyes on God and who He is. What about you? Are you fighting? If not, will you fight? Start asking yourself this question, where are your eyes focused today?